Hello and welcome to this new video into which we'll see the Mayas method to draw a fitting line from a point cloud. So um, let's remember with a point cloud that if we draw a line there are some differences between the eights, so the ordinates of the points and the ordinate that are uh, possible to calculate on the line. Okay, thanks to the expression of the, on the line. These differences, vertical differences, are named residues. So what was the idea of Meyer? Let me introduce you Gottfried Meyer. So in the year uh, 1740, um, he thought that a good line would the line that uh, could make that or such that the sum of the residues is zero. That means that the positive residues are coming from the point that are above the line exactly compensate the negative ones on the points that are below the line. So that's a good principle. And after having discovered that or invented that, yeah, he, he took glasses, of course, and uh, he developed his calculations. The residues can be calculated and so on. And he found after three lines of calculations, okay, very quick, that it was equivalent to G must belong to the line. What is G? This is the mean point of the cloud, a point whose coordinates are the average value of the X of the point and uh, the average value of the Y's of the point. So this is the center of the cloud. And there is a little problem. Okay, because there is an equivalence here, so um, Meyer took off his glasses and began to, uh, to be a, a bit afraid because this line, this dotted line, um, uh, owns G.2. Okay, and then this dotted line meets Meyer's principle. The positive residues here on the right exactly compensate the negative ones. Okay, um, the only point is that the sum of residues equals zero and uh, G belongs to D. So, um, well, in fact, there is an infinite number of lines that could correspond to Meyer's principle. And uh, one of them or some of them show the trend, more or less, of the cloud, but the majority of them don't. So, um, Meyer thought it was stupid to have invented this principle, but this is a good principle. This is just a weak principle, mathematically speaking. It's not enough. Okay, Maya uh, thought of a different method and uh, tried to <coughs> to perform an empiric way to find a line. So first, he decided to divide his cloud into two subclouds of the same size. So to fairly divide the cloud and horizontally by values of x. So he decided to cut the cloud um, and to separate the points whose abscissas were weak and the points whose abscissas were, were big. Um, then in each subpoint, uh, subcloud, sorry, we have to determine the midpoints, g1 and g2. Okay, and then to draw the line g1, g2. So let's see what happens in our example. If I'm trying to divide the cloud, I can see that there is an odd number of points, seven points, so I have to make a choice. So let's say four on the left and three on the right, and then I've got my two subclouds um, almost fairly divided. Um, in each subcloud, I can calculate a midpoint by the mean of the calculation of the average values of x and y, and then to obtain g1 somewhere and g2 on the right, and then to draw the line g1, g2. So it's a fact that uh, mathematically um, g, the midpoint of the whole cloud, belongs to the line g1, g2, and is between g1 and g2. So um, I, I'll let you uh, <laughs> try to know why. Um, this kind of line always contains G, the global midpoint of the cloud. So it's good news for Meyer because that means that this line meets Meyer's principle. 
okay it corresponds to a sum of residues that is zero so it's good news because this line is one of the lines um, that he expected at the beginning so he smiled again and uh, he never invented another method okay he stayed with that at this point and that's a method okay so let's apply it on an example with figures with exercise 7 of my document you can see um, a chart that represents different quantities of fertilizers on um, agricultural plots um, and then the harvest that succeeded <laughs> okay after the, afterwards uh, so as you can see um, if you make the quantity of fertilizer grow you have a bigger harvest so in a certain interval of fertilizer that's true well uh, let's graph it uh, on the first time and let's try to see what happens graphically so uh, my domain for x is between 80 and 220 my domain for y mm, would be with the labels uh, between 30 and 60 and then each row of the initial chart <coughs> um, gives a point on the graph with a value of x that is the quantity of fertilizer and the, val the value of y for the harvest the five points are located here this is an odd number of points again so we have to make a choice and let's choose three on the left and two on the right of course I could uh, have chosen the contrary okay two on the left three on the right is possible it will lead to a different Myers line in the end this way I'm trying to calculate the midpoints of each subcloud and uh, be careful with the chart because the values of X are not sorted okay so we have to select the right points um, that correspond to abscesses that are equal to 80, 90, um, 80, 100 and 120 so in red let's make them appear you have to calculate the average of these three values and the um, average of the three y's the three matching y's in the end the results are 142 coordinates of g1 and then we can calculate g2 thanks to the two remaining points 150 and 220 for x and 46 and 51 for y the average values being 185 and 48.5 so we know, uh, know how to uh, draw a Myers line from a cloud so it depends on the case but maybe the shape of the cloud doesn't correspond to a line or fitting it's not our problem here uh, if we've got a point cloud we can draw a Myers line on the point cloud uh, the next and last part will be to uh, discover the expression of the line because it will be useful for us to make statistical prediction um, by going on this line so uh, if you've got two points for a straight line you can calculate the slope of the line by the division of the difference of y's and the difference and or by the difference of x uh, so that means y of g2 minus y of g1 divided by x of g2 minus x of g1 delta y divided by delta x is always a slope graphically speaking so here you would have to divide uh, 6.5 by 85 the result being uh, no point no maybe mm, 8 6 4 7 I don't know I don't remember we'll see it I will display it well whatever now we have to calculate the y-intercept of the line and uh, the expression of the line um, taking um, a French way to express them is y equals ax plus b so uh, the y-intercept can be calculated thanks to y minus ax a has just been calculated but um, what kind of values for y and x can be chosen this expression is true 
whatever the position on the line. So you can take any points on the line, and you know two of them, G1 and G2. So let's take G1, for example, and calculate B thanks to Y minus AX. So it would be 42 minus A times 100. So let's display the result here. Yeah, that was 7647 for A. Um, B equals 42 minus 0 0.07647 times 100. Result, 34.35. Um, little comment, if you took G2 instead of G1, you would have obtained exactly the same result, of course, because this calculation will lead to the same result uh, with any point of the line. That's, what, <laughs> that's why it's called the expression of the line. Um, a last question. On this drone, we can see that the intersection between the line and the y-axis is about uh, at 40 as a value and not 34. So why is there such a difference? Because um, B is the y-intercept of the line if the y-axis is drawn above the zero value of x. Okay, so um, it has a meaning thanks to that. So if we um, go through um, the left, okay, and if we um, make a, um, an additional part of the graph until x equals zero, uh, the values of y decrease on the line until 34.35, of course. So I hope I helped you to better understand Maya's method and also to find the expression of a line uh, thanks to two points of this line. Thank you um, and see you in the next video. Bye.